Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with another slimline card. <laughs> Anyone who's been watching my videos in the last about two to three months, I'm obsessed. So I am starting with some Ranger Distress watercolor paper. I have this smooth side facing up and I have my little mini misty stamp positioner here. And I'm just stamping the little peach image and a few of the leaves from Honeybee's new freshly picked stamp set that is absolutely adorable. So many cute little cards. I wanted to use like all the fruit. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm using just the peach. <laughs> I use my anti-static powder tool. I stamped the images with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And then I am heat embossing them with um, Wow Clear Matte Dull Embossing Powder. Normally I just use just regular clear embossing powder. And then I came across this in one of my drawers of all the embossing powders and I'd forgot I had it. So I thought I would use it. The cool thing with the matte embossing powder is when you melt it, it looks shiny for the first few seconds because it's been heated up, you know, it's melting. But as it dries, you can literally see it turn matte. And the neat thing with that is it doesn't look like it's embossed. So if you don't like that shiny look, depending on your project, this is kind of a cool alternative. And the reason I like doing the embossing is it gives that raised edge. It makes watercoloring that a little bit easier because it kind of gives that little bit of a barrier but it's not 100% necessary either. It comes in handy when I do the background and I'll show that in a minute, but with the watercoloring, it isn't 100% necessary. But I thought it'd be nice to have them embossed because embossing, even the matte embossing, kind of resists the watercolor that I'm gonna use, which in this case is Distress Oxide inks. Because if I just left the images stamped with the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, because the oxide inks have a pigment to them, sometimes they'll kind of obscure and give that a little bit of a chalky look on top of the stamped lines. And I didn't want that, hence the heat embossing. So I used just the packaging, the stamped packaging for my little palette. And I just smushed some of the oxide inks onto my little makeshift palette. And I used um, Squeeze Lemonade, Distress Oxide, uh, Abandoned Coral, and Picked Raspberry just to kind of blend together to create, you know, a fun little peach color. And then all I'm doing is just wetting the area I'm painting with clean water first, and then starting with my lightest, which is the squeeze lemonade. I apply that with a paintbrush, and then I go into the abandoned coral and the picked raspberry, and I just kind of go back and forth so that all those colors not only blend together, but also sort of layer them kind of too, because I didn't want it to be too pink I didn't want the yellow to be too yellow and I also didn't want the harsh line between the colors. So I just go back and forth and kind of blend those colors together. That's it. Super simple. So I'm going to do that for all of the images. I ended up stamping a bunch. I use like, I keep, you know, all my little scraps of the Distress watercolor paper. So I'll have a bunch of peaches in the end. And then the stems, I just used some vintage photo. Then for all the leaves, I'm smushing some Twisted Citron Distress Oxide Ink and then some mowed Lawn and doing the exact same thing. I'll get the leaves wet with clean water first. I'll apply the Twisted Citron. I basically apply the Twisted Citron to what will be the, like the tips and ends of the leaves and then the mowed Lawn. Quickly blend them together a little bit. Done. So watercolored all of these in no time at all. Just turned out really cute. This little peach, I think it's adorable. So watercolored all of these images, made sure they were dry, which didn't take very long. Small images, I didn't add a ton of water. Once they're dry, I'm using the coordinating Honeycuts dies for the freshly picked set and taping that into place with a little bit of washi tape and just die cutting all of these images, just back to back to back so that everything is cut out. And then after I have all of these images um, die cut, I can start working on my background. And for the background, I used the Slimline Sentiments Eyelet Wafer Die Set. So excited that Honey Bee has released some Slimline dies. Again, I'm obsessed, can never have enough. So I die cut just some heavyweight white cardstock with the like scallop outline wafer die. So that cuts the like a scallop frame, which you could use to create a shaker if you wanted. And then it has just kind of this interior rectangle. So I took that interior rectangle and I am going to stamp a sentiment from the perfect, perfect <laughs> sentiment set. And this is where 
I want the resist. So I'm going to stamp the sentiment with that VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink and I'm going to heat emboss it with that Wow Matte Dull Clear Embossing Powder because I'm going to do some ink blending over this. Now the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, it would technically resist ink but it also could potentially smear when you're ink blending over it. So unless it's completely dry, so to avoid that heat emboss or stamp everything or like create your backgrounds let it fully dry then you could stamp on top of it so either one works but this is just kind of a way to have this done and then work on my background so i have my sentiment done and then i'm just blending the twisted citron oxide ink and i'm just working on one of my little tonic um, craft mats so working on that blending the ink from the bottom and i've super sped this up in ending but it didn't take very long but starting from the bottom and i just kind of blended it and i didn't add much ink and just kind of let it fade out to white towards the top and of course i had to add a bit of splatter not a ton just a little bit so i just kind of smushed my mode lawn oxide ink into the ink pad and then took the brush swirled it in a bit of water splattered that onto the background and then set that aside to dry in my cardstock, I had some coral color cardstock in my stash. I don't have a link for it. I'll link to the Lawn Fawn Guava cardstock. That's the closest match I could find. The Guava cardstock is a bit more pink than this, but it would work really well for this too. But cut that to seven inches by eight and a half inches, and I'd scored it at three and a half. So this will be a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch slimline card. So after scoring it, I stamped the inside with another sentiment from the Perfect Sentiment Set. So I stamped it with that VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, um, heat embossed it with that matte dull embossing powder. With this, it, that's not necessary on the inside because I'm not really technically doing anything. But I did this because sometimes when you stamp the VersaFine Claire Nocturne, especially on the inside, if you don't let it dry enough and then you close your card, <laughs> you get ink on like the inside of the card. I've done that so many times. So I thought, you know what, I'll just heat emboss it, save myself the aggravation. So I did that to the sentiment. And then I'm going to um, finish the outside of the card. So I've got that panel. The thanks die cut is from that same slimline sentiments eyelet wafer die set. There's several sentiments in it. Really fine detail. And the font matches the script font in the perfect sentiments stamp set, which I just love. I love when things match up. And I really like these fine dies. So I die cut it from green cardstock three times and stack them all together with liquid adhesive. And then I use that same liquid adhesive on the back of the frame, the little scalloped eyelet frame. I applied the frame first and then I inlaid the rectangle. And because I use liquid adhesive, it gave me, you know, a few seconds to kind of line everything up and move it around. And then I just used the tiniest little dots of adhesive on the back of the die cut removed a little bit of the excess with my finger so it doesn't ooze out because you can see it's just so fine but ugh, I love it love it so I adhered the sentiment and then I started arranging all these little peaches and uh, leaves and whatnot on my card front so once I was kind of happy with the layout I started adhering everything with liquid glue just kind of sticking them wherever I wanted and then just adhering all these little die cut leaves here and there along um, the card and this is where if you've got any oops which I did a couple times I managed to get like splotches of glue here and there because I wasn't paying enough attention so I just adhered a leaf over it so you can't tell <laughs> and then the last couple of little peaches and leaves I'm going to adhere on the inside of the card just right around the sentiment there so same thing, adding them with that liquid adhesive and then just kind of tucking in those last few leaves to finish off the inside of the card. And as always, you could leave the card here, it'd be good. But I had some little pearls in my stash that I decided to use. So I pulled those out and I'm going to kind of sprinkle those throughout the card front just to give it that little bit of extra bling and finish it off. So once I got these adhered, um, this card is complete. So as always, I will have a link below the video to the blog post. I will have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies used. This, like I said, this is from Honeybee's new summer release. There's so many amazing products. Love it. So I'll have a link to that as well. Check out the description box below the video for all of that. Thank you all so much for watching and commenting and thumbs upping, sharing all of it. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.